Well, hello, everyone. This is the day the Lord has made, and of course, we are rejoicing and glad in it. Praise God. Not being moved by what we see, by what we feel, but only by what we believe. So let me get my little scarf off here. Praise God. And let's get ready to go. The Lord is good in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. So let's see what we got going on here. Amen. And uh, many of you that are coming on, uh, that are supposed to be on live with me, just go ahead and prepare yourself to come on. And we are getting things adjusted for you specifically in Jesus' name. Praise God. So um, trying to get everything here working. Twyla, God bless you, Twyla. Good having you with us today. Praise God. Uh, as many of you are starting to come on, uh, Twyla, God bless your daughter. Dr. Bev is on now. Glory to God. Welcome, Dr. Bev. Amen. God is faithful. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. And uh, as each of you continue to come on, who is this coming? Robin. God bless you, Robin. Welcome. 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 Praise God to be, for being on tonight live. <laughs> Glory to God uh, on Facebook. Amen. So we're excited about you being on with us today. And each of you that are coming on, we just praise God for you in the name of Jesus. You know, as we're coming on to see what the word of God say today. Now, we've got a good word for you today. This is called Midweek Faith boost. Glory <laughs> to God. Midweek Facebook and faith boost. And, you know, last week I made a, a, a type error and I actually typed in there midweed faith week. <laughs> you follow me? You know, midweek faith, uh, uh, I mean, midweed faith boost. And, and my, my son had to, had, had to let me know about that, you know, in those areas that that you, you spelled that wrong. <laughs> so it's not midweed. It's actually midweek. Praise God. And so God, God bless you today. And welcome, welcome, welcome. God bless you, Robin. We, we see you there. And all of you that have come on today, it's going to be exciting, exciting, exciting today for a good word from God. Amen. Praise God. So let's get ready for that. So let me turn my other phones off here. So we'll get these things off. So let me turn my other phones off here. So we'll get these things off. Amen. So let me get these off. There we go. Praise God. And get that off. And so... Uh, many of you, you may get a, a, like a little thing saying, you know, uh, you know, come on live with Dr. Craig. So if you get that, just go ahead and uh, answer that and it, it should let you come on. Praise God. So uh, it's, it's a great blessing. I'm excited about being with you today. Dr. Bev is in Phoenix. Praise God. So she's on with me also. And so I'm on here in Las Vegas. And so but uh, thank God for for what we can do through Facebook. Praise God. So welcome, 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 welcome. So I'm going to talk to you today. I was telling Dr. Bill that one of the things, you know, that we, that we all find out is at certain times in our lives, we find that we're in what's called a faith fight. Is anybody there that listens to me tonight on, in a faith fight? <laughs> Amen. You know, when you're in a, you said, Dr. Craig, I'm in a faith fight. You know, what that means that you believe in God for some things and it don't seem like they're happening in the time that you think they ought to be happening. You know, what it is, you're in a faith fight. Amen. The devil is not after you. He's after the only thing that we can whip him with. And that is called faith. The Bible said that we, that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against the powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So what we're really doing is we're fighting against those unseen forces. But what are they after? The Bible said the judge shall live by their faith. Bible says, with, the, with our faith, we can quench every fiery dart of the devil. So what, so what, so what is the devil after? If, if, if I was after anything and I'm your enemy, I would be after the weapon that you have in your possession that you can use to, 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 to quench my every dart I throw at you. And that is the weapon of faith. So what you're in tonight is, a, is we call a faith fight. <laughs> Amen. A faith fight. But guess what? We win. And I want you to, can I, can I prophesy to you for a moment? Can I prophesy the end to you right now? You win. <laughs> Amen. Whether it's in a personal faith fight with your, with the health of your body, a personal faith fight in your finances, a personal faith fight in your marriage, a, a personal faith fight with dealing with your children, <laughs> God, a personal faith fight on your job or whatever it is. The, the main thing is that the Bible says, thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory. <laughs> Amen. So we already know what, what the, the end result is going to be, and the end result is victory. Praise God. Dr. Joe Blake, God bless you, man of God. Welcome today in Jesus' name. Praise God. So let's look at our scripture tonight in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse number 12, and we're going to look at something that Paul made a statement of. 
We're talking about, we're talking about uh, what to do when it seems like your faith is not working. In other words, God, by now it should have been working by now. Praise God. Uh, first Timothy chapter six, verse 12 says this fight the good fight of faith. Now, I don't know about you that it, it tells you fight. Now, the word fight means there is a contending that's going on. Are you following me? It means to struggle to compete for a prize. It means it implies an adversary. So anytime that you're fighting, it means that someone is fighting against you. Someone is adversely to what you believe in God for. That's what a fight is all about. It's, it, it, it infers an adversary that's standing out in front of you and opposing your progress. But the, the good thing is this. The Bible says fight the good fight of faith. That means you can't just sit back and say, you know what, whatever it would be, would be, que sera, que sera. No, you're in a fight. Amen. But the good thing is it's called a good fight. A good fight. That means that you win. I don't know about you, but uh, I've been in very few fights in my life, physical fights. But one thing I always did, <laughs> you follow me, if I'm going to fight, I'm going to win. And I remember I was only about 16 years old. And, and I was at this bar with these older guys. I, I was going to shoot pool with these older guys all the time. And so as we're coming out of this bar, this one guy, he was drunk. He going, you know, he just picked on me for, I guess because I was the youngest kid there. He just picked on me. Well, this was like in the 1960s when we had afros and we used to carry around those, those afro picks in our pocket all the time. So he, you know, he just kept bothering me. You know, you, you know, just, you know, like he's going to fight me or something. So he came at me. I, I didn't know what to do. All I did, I took that look that <laughs> I took that fork out, my, my, my afro fork, and I began to punch him in his face, punch him in his face, punch him in his face. And he just started bleeding everywhere. He, he said, what you, why are you doing that for? I said, man, I told you I didn't want to fight, but if I'm going to fight, I'm going to win. <laughs> if, uh, if I'm going to fight, I'm going to win. And so, you know, so, uh, you know, he, he went all the way to that point in that, that time there in Jesus' name. The only time I remember that, you know, I, I was in a fight, I was in, this was before I got saved, this back in the 1970s and things like that, before I got saved. You know, we got in some things with some more, some more guys and these guys from a whole nother state. And a, a, a friend of mine had uh, kind of, you know, mistreated uh, their, their daughter. I mean, not their daughter, but their sister, I think it was. And so all of us that was a part of the little group that we had, they, they, they came from all from another state to, to, to jump on each person. And they had jumped on everybody except for me. <laughs> you follow me? I said, you know what? I can see they came for a fight. So if I'm going to fight, I'm going to win. So I put out there. I, 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 put in, I said, put the news out. Y'all ain't got to look for me because they had already, they had already jumped on all the other guys that was part of our group. I said, tell them, they ain't got to look for me. I said, tell them, tell them I'm looking for them. <laughs> Amen. I went and got my gun and I, cause I'm, I've not carried a gun over 50 years. You know, I don't even carry a gun now, but at that time I carried a gun and I said, I got my gun. I said, tell them you ain't got to find me. I'm looking for you now. <laughs> you follow me? They left. Cause I thought, all right, if I'm going to fight, I'm going to be like David. I ain't going to wait for you to come at me. I'm going to come at you. So that's what a fight is. A fight is not standing stationary. A fight is not running. A fight is if I'm going to fight, I'm going to win. And thank God he's given us a weapon to fight with. You know, David, it, it looked like David didn't have the right kind of weapon because all he had was a slingshot and five stones. Saul was a skilled warrior fighter. But David had a weapon that he says, if I'm going to fight, I'm going to win. He said, this is what David said. He said, this day, he said, he said you come to me, Saul, with a, not Saul, but a, a Goliath, with a sword and with a spear. That's what you come to fight with. He said, but I'm coming with you at the with the name of the Lord. And the Bible said he took up five stones and he ran toward the enemy. Because he said, I'm going to fight the good fight. And he, then he said this, and this day, he started speaking, he started using the, he started using the voice of faith. He said, this day, I'll take your head from you. So he was in a faith fight. His brothers and Saul was back there scared. But David said, if I'm going to fight, I'm going to fight to win. So you are coming to me with a sword and a spear, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. <laughs> you know, I'm coming to you to win. I, I'm equipped. So what David says, I got the shield of faith. You got the shield of your, your natural shield. I come to you with the shield of faith, and I'm going to quench every fiery dart every weapon that you have. And he said, and this them take your head off you. That's how you got to fight saints. That's how, that's the kind of armor we got to get a hold to that, that, that many times God is saying, you're praying to me to intervene. And I'm telling you, get your, get, get, you know, get your sword of the spirit up. I'm telling you, get your shield of faith up. 
I'm telling you that I put within you the 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 the, the, the ability and and uh, and uh, to quench the fire dust of the devil. And if you resist him with the word of God, he will flee from you. But God said, I'm not I'm not going to resist him for you. And I'm not going to fight him for you because I've given you the shield of faith. You've got the shield. You have to use the You have to use the word. You have to use faith as your shield and the word of God in your mouth as your sword. So God said, I'm not going to do it for you. So sometimes we sit around waiting on God to do it for us. And God said, no, you do it. I've given you, you know, what if David would have said, okay, I'm sitting back and God's going to get the, get, give you in my hands. So I'm going to wait on God to conquer you. Goliath. No, that is not what he did. Bible said he got his five stones. He, he, he got, he got what he had and God used what he had, released his power on it and he defeated the devil and, and he, and then he took the devil's weapon, uh, of his sword and cut his head off. So what I'm saying is says about men of us are in fights, but we're sitting back passive, waiting on the, waiting on God to do something, but God has put it within our hands to win the fight. I said, God has put it in our hands to win the fight. You got that. So think about this now. You and I <clears throat> are not called to fight with Satan. You got that? Uh, or demons. Although he is our enemy, but we're called to fight the good fight of faith. That's 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7. I mean, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith. So you and I, it's time to get up and fight. I remember my spiritual daughter, her name is Silky Mason, used to always say, Dr. Craig, and when we fight, we win. <laughs> You'll follow me. And when we fight, we win. So the whole point is we can't sit back looking for God to do something that he's already equipped us to do. And I think that's probably much of the problems of the church today is we call it waiting on the Lord. Well, there is a period of waiting on the Lord. I understand that point. But we're waiting on God sometime to do that which he's already put into our hands to do. He says, fight. <laughs> he says, fight. So if we got to get some fight in us. But we, because we got the weapon of faith. We got the sword of the spirit. He said, in the sword of the spirit, you can resist the devil. He'll flee from you. And with the, the shield of faith, you, you can quench all the fires of the darts of the devil. So, so God is not going to deal with the devil for us. We got to get a hold to that. Amen. So look at this. We must understand that Satan is a defeated foe. Very important to understand that. Notice the book of 1 Peter chapter number 5 and verse number 8. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 8, what it says here. It says, um, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You get that? He's saying, what he's saying? Be sober. Then he says, be vigilant. That means, you know, get strong, strength about yourself. Get some vigor about yourself. You know, stop sitting back feeling sorry for yourself. <laughs> you follow me? Be sober, of a sober mind. Be vigilant, he said, because your adversary, you got an adversary, saying, I mean, you know, it's, sometimes we, we try to blame it on people. He said, but we have an adversary. He said, our adversary is the devil. But God is not going to fight him for us. He's an adversary, but we're, he's not going to fight him for us because he's equipped us to do it. He's given you and I the shield of faith. He's given, he's given you and I uh, uh, the, the, the sword of the spirit. He told us to be vigilant because your adversary as a roaring lion. He's not, a, he's not a lion. Jesus is the lion from the tribe of Judah. Satan is a fake. He fakes as a lion. But Jesus is the lion from the tribe of Judah. And he says, he walketh about, this is now, seeking whom he may devour. That means he can't automatically do it. He's looking for someone who, whose shield has been let down. He's looking for someone whose sword has been displaced and who's feeling sorry for themselves. <laughs> you follow me? Someone that's, you know, woe is me. Why is all this happening to me? He says, I got them. He said, because they're not vigilant. 
They're not being sober. They're not recognizing that I'm an adversary. And that's me trying to talk them out of the good things God has for their lives. That that fight that they're going on is in their mind. And if they would cast down that imagination and they would bring that thought into captivity, they can defeat me, Satan is saying. Because any thought that Satan sends to you that you don't act on, that you don't speak out loud, will die unborn. I'm going to say that again. Any negative thought of defeat and of failure that you do not speak or act on will die unborn. It has no power in your life until you conceive it uh, and receive it as, you know, a defeat. But look what the scripture says, saints, in the book of First Timothy, I mean, I'm sorry, First Corinthians chapter number 15 and verse number 57. First Corinthians chapter 15. Thank you, Dr. Bell. I see Dr. Bell putting them scriptures for me. Thank you, Dr. Bell. Praise God. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 57. Look what it says there. It says, but thanks be unto God, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the victory. How? Through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we already know then that we can thank God for the victory. And we learn how to thank God for the victory, not based upon how we feel, but based upon what his word says, that I know I have the victory. So I'm not, I'm not fighting for the victory. I'm fighting from my position of victory. I'm going to say it again. I'm not fighting for a position of victory. I'm fighting from my position of victory. Because Jesus has already given me what? The victory. So, and, and so I thank God who has given us what? The victory. How? Through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ defeated Satan. The Bible said he spoiled principles and powers. And so, so that fight that we're in, we got to fight with it. With, with, see, the, I'm telling you, for God, had, playing church is over with. <laughs> you follow me? You know, thank God for good church. But just singing the choir won't, 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 won't win your battle. Well, Pastor Craig, I serve the Lord real much. Serving the Lord is good. We should serve God. But that won't win the battle. You've got to get yourself in faith. And understand how faith works and how to fight the good fight of faith so that your faith will win every time. Now, notice what it says here in the book of Second Corinthians, chapter number, chapter number two and verse 14. Second Corinthians, chapter two, verse 14. Notice what it says here. It says, now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ. He always, not sometimes up and sometimes down, sometimes I'm going to level to the ground, but thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph, how? In Christ, in the anointing, and makes manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. That means no matter what you're going through, God has given you the ability to triumph. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, you follow me. You know, to, 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 to have, like David, when he won Goliath, he had the glass head and said, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, tr I'm walking triumphantly now. I got the enemy that came against me. I got his head now. Well, praise God. We're believing God that, that, your, that Goliath's head is that cancer that's trying to come on your body. And, and you're going to walk free with that, 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 that diagnosis and that prognosis that says you are healed. Every symptom has gone in Jesus name. You know, you're going to be able to walk with the, with, with that bill that's due Glory to God. And you're going to walk with that bill in your hand said paid in full glory to God. Why? Because he's, he's made you and I to be triumphant, triumphant marriage, triumphant finances, triumphant health in your body, triumphant, whatever you need, whatever you're facing right now, Bible said God's going to cause you to triumph in that area and you're going to hold the victory of that thing in your hand. And that's going to be a trophy that God has given to you that, he, that he's transferred the victory over to you. And you're going to walk triumphantly in your life from this day forward in Jesus mighty name. Come on, receive that, receive that and begin to declare, put that in the post. I walk victoriously. I am triumphant in every area of my life. 
Amen. You got to begin to declare that in faith in Jesus name. You got that. So notice what it says here, because many times as Christians, we're trying to be come who we already are. I'm going to say it again. Many times as Christians, we're trying to become what we already are. Notice what it says here in the book of Colossians from Colossians chapter number two and verse number 10. I see it, Dr. Joe. That's right, Dr. Joe. Amen. You are triumphant. That's right. I love that. Uh, Colossians chapter two and verse number 10. Look what it says there. It says, and you are complete in him and you are complete in him. So you don't need to do anything to add to what Christ has already done. I see it, Robin. Robin said, I'm, I'm, I'm triumphant. I'm victory. I like that, Robin. Praise God. So you got to begin to declare that. It says, you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and powers. So look what it says. You are complete in him. That means there's nothing more that needs to be added to your life spiritually, physically, or financially when you understand you're in Christ. When you understand that Jesus Christ died for your sins and you're forgiven. When you understand that by his stripes you were healed. When you understand that he became poor, that you might be made rich. And the blessing of the Lord make it rich. When you understand that, then you understand, when I see that, I'm complete in Christ. So I, but the whole goal is, saints of God, most Christians are full of that information, but they have no revelation of it. I'm going to say it again. Most Christians are full of that information. They can quote all these scriptures to you. They got all the tapes, the books, and everything, but they have no revelation of the information they have, and that's what they've been defeated at. That, that's why sometimes we say, I don't know, because, man, I know the Bible. I done read the Bible twice, three times. I, I got these books, these tapes, and that's all good, and we should do that. Are you following me? But the thing is, we got to transfer the information to a revelation. Jesus told Peter, whom do men say that I am? Peter said, some say you're Elijah, some say you're Jeremiah, one of the prophets. He said, but who do you say I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said that flesh and blood through human learning did not give that to you. In other words, you could not have got that through your five senses. He said, but my father has revealed that to you. He said, and upon this rock of revelation, I will build my church. And that revelation that you get the gates of hell cannot prevail against it. Are you following me? So what's happening is, you know, the church, we didn't did enough shouting. I love praising God. Never wrong praising God. But what people, what the church needs now is not more information, not just more preaching, which is nothing wrong with good preaching. I'm not putting that down. But we need a revelation. We need to get in the word of God until God, we meditate the word until we get a revelation on that information. And once you get that, that completeness, a revelation that you are complete in Christ. That the word Christ means the anointing. And when you understand that you're pleading in him, that anointing on that the who Jesus is, he's, he, Jesus is the, the, he's the Messiah, the Christ, and the anointed one, and his anointing, then that anointing starts destroying every yoke in your life. You follow me? That's what the anointing has been designed to do. It'll, it'll destroy, be yoke, and move over burden. But why is Christians so full of shouting and jumping and quoting scriptures, but there's no deliverance because a lack of revelation? Most of the time we can say, oh, I went to church on Sunday and Patrick preached real good, but, but, you can't, but, but if there was no change in your life. Because you might have got encouraged, you might, have, you might feel better and everything, but only a revelation will cause the anointing to manifest that actually destroys that yoke in your life. Are you following me? And that's why it's so important to continue to meditate on these kind of scriptures in those areas. Notice here, you need to know that Satan is an eternally defeated foe. I'm going to say it again. You need to know that Satan is an eternally defeated foe. That means in your body, Satan has been defeated because by Jesus stripes you were healed. You've been released to that curse. Same and defeated in your finances because he made God made you rich. He gave he said, I'll give you power to get wealthy, establish my covenant. See, so so you gotta recognize that Satan concerning everything concerning you spiritually, 
physically and financially, he's already been defeated. Jesus already defeated him. He said it's finished. He, Jesus already defeated him on those areas. But you and I have to take authority over that. Now, we've got to fight this good fight of faith and take back everything the devil has stole and is keeping us from enjoying as being children of God. Notice that Jesus Christ said in the book of Revelation chapter number 1, verse 18. Revelation chapter 1, verse 18, look what it says. Jesus wrote from the dead and said this, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. Oh, my God. Did you get what that said? Jesus said, I am he that liveth, meaning I died, but I'm, I'm alive now. And I could not have came alive until you could come with me. I could not come raised righteous until all your sins were forgiven because I died for your sins. He's, he's declaring, I am he that liveth now. He said, I was dead, but I'm alive forevermore. And I now have the keys. See, Satan boasts of what he can do. But all of Satan's keys were taken away from him. Jesus said, I now have the keys both of death and of hell. Glory to God. So Satan cannot, but see, but if we don't know that as Christians, I mean, I got Christians sometimes say, you know what? You know, the Bible says three score and 10. And we, you know, we kind of like give up because, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm 70 years old. But no, that was to those, that was to the Jews people who was not walking in God. God told the days of no, he said, your days should be 120. So, but, but if you latch on to that satanic lie of three score and 10, you started thinking about, you know, my days are ending. I'm in the last days. No, no, no. That is what God said to the the children of Israel who were in disobedience. But to the body of Christ, God said your days shall be shall be 120 years. So you got to start changing your mind on that because Jesus had the keys of death and hell. And that and that and that's that death that the devil tried to put on put on the body of Christ. Jesus canceled that. But you got to receive that in faith and start working to live and not looking to die. <laughs> Glory to God. Wake up in Jesus mighty name. Praise God. Can you see that today? So notice what he says here. I'm going to read this in the book in, in the Amplified Bible here in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 14. Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14 in the Amplified Bible. You, some of you are looking on your phones and things like that, your iPads or your regular Bibles. This is in the Amplified Bible, Hebrews chapter 2 verse 14. Look what Jesus, look what the, Paul said this. He says, since therefore these children share in flesh and blood in the physical nature of human beings. Jesus himself in similar matter took part of the same that by going through death, he might bring to naught or to nothing and make of no effect him who had the power of death. That is the devil. <laughs> so Jesus, the word not means to nothing. So Jesus on that cross, through his death, burning, and resurrection brought Satan to nothing. That Satan has no more anything to win over your life. Jesus took that death that Satan had authority over. And he released you and I from it. You got that? And notice what he says in verse 15. Verse 15, Hebrews 2.15 in the Amplified Bible. He says this. And also... That he might deliver, this is now, also that he might deliver and completely set free all those who through the haunting fear of death were held in bondage throughout the whole course of their lives. Good news, saints. Good news. You have been completely delivered, delivered from death and that early death because you know and you know uh you know as you get the older you get if you're not careful the devil stuff in your mind where well, everybody i was raised with is, is is dying now so i guess I, I must be next that's a lie saints that's a lie god said i was satisfied with long life so you so you can't put yourself in that number bible says, and see that fear of death he says is bondage see what it says he, to, verse 15 that he might deliver those who through the fear of death 
uh, were, uh, 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 it says who delivered and completely set free all those who through the hunting fear of death were held in bondage. See, the fear of death is bondage. You, so you can't let people that you see that dying cause you to start fearing death. Because Jesus has the keys. But Satan will, Satan will accommodate that fear and make you think that, okay, yeah, you're included in that group. No, you're not. You've been set free by the blood of Jesus. You follow me? So as, as the body of Christ, we got to start understanding we've been set free. I see my daughter Billy's on. God bless you, Billy. Praise God. Welcome today, daughter. Amen. So are you, are you seeing this today? This is, this is so, so, so very important. You are free. Glory to God. Can you receive that today? Now notice what it says. So let me give you a few points here about how to win this faith fight. You ready? A few points of how to win this faith fight. And we're going to use Jesus as our model. Okay. Number one, this is now, do not fight Satan with your own strength because you're no match for him. See, you know, we fight him with the shield of faith. You try to fight the devil with your own strength or your own human intellect, you win, you'll lose every time. He gave you the shield of faith to the quench the fire darts of the devil. You got that? He gave you the soul of the spirit in your words. You got to get that word in your mouth by revelation in Jesus' name. Notice what happened in Jesus. Jesus is in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1 through 4. Look, look what Jesus Anytime you're going through things, recognize, saints, it's a fight of faith. Look what it says here. Matthew 4, 1 through 4. Then was Jesus led up of the spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterwards a hungered. Verse 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, if, there you go right there, if you be the son of God, Command these stones be made bread. The devil tried to get you to prove who you are that you already are. <laughs> He's like, now, if you be the son of God, you got to know you are the son of God. And you got to prove nothing to the devil. So the devil trying to get Jesus to prove that he's something that he already is. And, that, and so you don't owe the devil no explanation, saints. <laughs> it's a fact. You are a child of God. It's a fact by Jesus Christ who were healed. It's a fact. His blood was shed for your sins and you are forgiven in Jesus name. So you ain't got to prove that to Satan or anyone else. You got that? So look, so notice what Jesus answered. Notice how Jesus answered it. It said, and Jesus answered and said, it is written. You get that? Words out of his mouth. It is written. Man shall not live by bread alone. But by every word that proceeds out the mouth of God, Jesus used the sword of the spirit, which was the word of God. And he released his faith in that word of God that caused the devil to leave. Glory to God. That's where you are right now, saints. That's where you are right now in Jesus' name. Now, so look what it says. Let's, let's go to Ephesians for a moment. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 16. And we're going to see this. This is, see, saints, all we need is to be refreshed in the word. Amen. Because many of you, you know these words, scriptures all the time. It's just time for you to be refreshed in these scriptures. Ephesians 6, 16 says, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you will be able to quench all, not some, all the fiery darts of the wicked. That means not, there's not one dart the devil throws in your life, spiritually, physically, emotional, financially, financially, that you do not have the power through the word of God and faith to conquer. Glory to God. Can you see that? Hallelujah. And that's why the devil would love to take people out of faith and get you get back into, you know, uh, you know, I, I know a lot of people that I, uh, that I trained in faith. The devil would get a t and I know some of them went back into religious churches that would just get back in the emotions and stuff like that. And, and their faith level started going down. <laughs> Are you following? Because it was more easier to not walk in faith. So that, you know, let me get back in religion again. Let me just get back on doing this and do these religious, these religious activities instead of really walking by faith and not by sight. Because, you know, the devil wants to pull you out of your faith because that's where he gets the victory at. But Jesus said, no, I'm not backing down. I, I, it, I'm, I'm going to stay on what's written. 
I'm going to keep walking by the word of God and, and, and not by my five senses. So you and I then, point number two is this, is you have to fight with Satan from your position of victory, not for a position of victory. Are you getting that today? Number three, fight as though, fight as though you as one who has already won the victory, not someone trying or struggling to obtain it. Very important. Point number four, point number four, is do not fight with demons to see who wins. You got that? Jesus said, in my name, you shall cast out devils. So you're not trying to find who wins. You got, you got that today? Uh, 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 Mark 16, 17 says this, and these signs shall follow the believers. In my name, you shall cast out devils. Notice he didn't say God going to cast them out. He said, in my name, you shall cast out devils. So sometimes, with, you know, I, I remember with this, I went to this meeting one time, and, and I remember I was, I was a brand new Christian. I remember instead of them, they, 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 this girl came with a demonic spirit, and they put in the Bible, said, uh, 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 devil, the, the word of God is against thee. Them people, that devil just kept acting up. <laughs> you follow me? So what has to happen is this. In my name, you shall cast out devils. God Wake up, church. You can't shout this one out. You can't sing this one out. Are you following me? You shall cast out devils. You and I must take the authority now, rise up in our, in our full rights, being complete in Christ, and start getting the devil out of our, out of our bodies, get the devil out of our finances, Get the devil out of your relationship with your marriages, with your children. You got to get in the fight and fight the good fight of faith. Because guess what? When you fight, you win. <laughs> Go over to God. Are you following it today? Very important. Point number five is this. Point number five. Do not give the devil any place, no foothold, or no opportunity, you follow me, to take advantage of you. Ephesians 4.27, Ephesians 4.27 says this, neither give place to the devil. Don't give him no foothold. So again, God not going to do it for you. You got to shut down the avenues that Satan has been getting into your life. You can't talk, you can't tilly toller with the world and expect your faith to work. You got, you got to shut the door on that, uh, on the avenues Satan been getting into your marriage getting with your children, getting with your, your health of your body. You got to shut those doors. It said, give no place to the devil. Don't give him no place to have advantage of your life. So it's time for you and I to arise and say, you know what? I'm waiting on God. It's time. God said, I'm waiting, been waiting on you. God said, you fix it. <laughs> amen. You know, amen. Praise God. Of course, we give God the glory for it all. Because he didn't want to give us this authority in the first place. But he said, you fix it. You cast the devil out. In Jesus' name. It's time for us to walk in that level of revelation, saints, in Jesus' name. So, point number six is this. Submit yourself to God. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. That's James chapter 4, verse 7. James 4, 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Let's get back on, 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 on this thing about God. Not religion. Not being with this person, that person. But let's get back God conscious. Let's get back word conscious. Let's get Holy Spirit conscious. Let's get God inside me conscious. And then with that, he said, you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. Glory to God. Like what man said, he run in the church and said, man, whoo, whoo, man, uh, I've been, man, what's, what's wrong? Man, I, I, me and the devil been had it out. You know, uh, he, said, what, what, he said, yeah. He said, the only thing is uh, I'm running and he's chasing me. <laughs> <laughs> you follow me? No, you shouldn't be running the devil. But I said, resist the devil. Stand firm and resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Y you ain't got to call on God in this area. Of course, there's a time in our personal pro life we do call on God. But when it comes down to the devil, he said, you resist the devil. You cast out the devil. Amen. Praise God. You take authority that God has given you. Jesus said, I think it was good. He said, I give you power and authority over all devils, over all the power of the enemy. And doesn't the enemy has hurt you. It's time for the body of Christ to rise up in that. 
Amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter number 2, verse 11 says, we're going to be finishing just a couple minutes, saints. We finish a few minutes. Notice it says, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11 says, lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. We are not ignorant of his devices. See, Satan's been using the devices. He got us shouting. He got us praising. He got us getting titles. Well, I'm now an apostle. I'm now a prophet. Oh, my God. I'm now the doctor so-and-so. I'm not against none of that. But, he, but people are getting all these things. But none of those things, none of those titles will give you any more authority of the devil. <laughs> Over there, you follow myself today? You got to find a, you, 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 we can't be ignorant of his devices. He's coming at us through, number one, our lack of faith, walking in faith. Number two, not walking and talking the word. The soul of the spirit and the shield of faith. That's where he's getting the body of Christ at. You got that? Now, it's very important. Point number seven is this. Do not deliberately or knowingly practice sin. There's a lot of sin and saints out there. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm under grace. Not the grace. Yeah, we're under grace. But it's called greasy grace. <laughs> Amen. Just slipping back and forth in the, in, in the sin. And what it is, the devil knows he's weakening a lot of Christians. Because you're trying to, you're trying to just barely get to heaven. Instead of, walk, instead, instead of look, look what the Bible says in the book of First John chapter 5, verse 18. First John 5, 18 says this. For we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one touches him not. That word sinneth not means it's not a practicer of sin. Well, any of us can fall into sin. Any of us can sin. But he says sinneth means Anyone that gets to start practicing sin habitually, knowing that it's wrong, you're doing it anyway. He says, you're not born of God. The devil is taking you totally out of your new birth experience and got you walking in your flesh. Are you following me? And he said, therefore, the enemy is touching you because you're living in sin. You're walking in sin. He said, but if, you, if you're born of God, he said, and you stop that practicing your sin and you start keeping yourself from that, the wicked one can't touch you. Are you following that? So I see that a lot going on. People do, they living with each other. They, they, you know, they shacking and, you know, a lot of them is, you know, going to bars and different things like that. You know, doing all kind of crazy stuff they're doing now. Cause they said, we're under grace now. Well, you, you go ahead and do that. Are you following me? But I'm telling you something, says of God. If you really want the devil to stop touching you, the Bible says, you gotta stop sinning. Are you following me? Because when you when you walk in the sin, I'm not talking about following. If not all of us, you know, have missed it. I'm not putting that down, but begin to practice it where there's no more conscious of what you're doing now. You're doing it habitually now, and as though you're acting like it's all right with God. And what if the devil is touching you in your body, in your spirit, in your anointing? You're not gonna flow on the strength of your anointing doing that. I tell people all the time, you do that kind of thing. I see you in five years, you won't last that long. Because it may look like, because you may be gifted and talented, and may, it may look like you're doing good, but talent will wear out. <laughs> you're following those areas. So, that's important, isn't it? So, I, I want to share those things with you today. Because Christ's presence in us, which, which I want you to enjoy from this day forward, will preserve you from evil. And the wicked one who is Satan will no longer get a grip on your life. That's my prayer for you today, saints. I pray that Christ's divine presence becomes preeminent in your life. I pray that his presence will preserve you from all evil. And I, I pray that through that preservation that, that only Christ can give you, the wicked one, Satan, will no longer be able to get a grip on you or touch your anointing. Hallelujah. So some people, sometimes your anointing is waning because of that kind of thing. Touch your, your body or touch your, your money in the name of Jesus. That's my prayer for you because it's time for you and I to move on past this trial of our faith and, and understand we win. And from this day forward, no matter what you're going through, I declare in Jesus' name, you win spiritually. You win in the health of your body. Matter of fact, I, I speak to the, those that are having migraine headaches right now. I speak health. 
I speak that headache goes right now in the name of Jesus. That's demonic pressure on you. But I speak it now and I cast that spirit away from your mind. That, 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 that bad dreams, those nightmares, that, that demonic activity. I cancel it by the authority of Jesus Christ off of your life. In G- I break his power of your life. And then from this day forward, you're going to walk free from that in the name of Jesus. You're going to walk free from that oppression of the devil. Some of you, it's, it's, it's been going on for years where you've had that demonic spirit that come to you at night and things like that. That spirit of fear hovering over you. But as of today, I cancel the devil's assignment off your life. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You rise up now, complete in Christ, walking in the word of God, resisting that spirit now. And I decree right now he flees from you in Jesus name. Amen and amen. That's right. You're back in the fight again, the fight of faith, and you're winning in Jesus name. Praise God. It's been a great time being with you all today. I thank God for all of you. I'm, I've been watching many of you that have been on today. I thank God for all of you that have joined us. Uh, my seven other bit, we, we come on on Thursday nights here. We call it midweek faith boost. <laughs> Amen. Midweek faith boost. I pray your faith has been boosted today in Jesus' name. Well, before we dismiss, we want to uh, do two things. Number one, we want to receive our tithes and offerings today. Uh, uh, right there on Facebook or YouTube. I'll be watching this. I'm in here right now. I'm on Facebook. Uh, uh, if you look, you scroll down, sow your seed. I mean, get, you know, get over the fear of giving. Some, you know, sometimes you say, well, I can't afford to do it. That's fear. That's the devil trying to keep you from your harvest. Get over the fear of giving. Are you following me? Learn how to be led by the Spirit of God. So right there on, on Facebook, if you scroll down, you'll see where I have, you know, uh, you, can get, you can give your tithe, your offerings. You find me, you, you, there's, a, there's a QR code there. On the, on the QR code, probably on, not on Facebook there, but there's a link that you, they got my, my, uh, my Zelle is on there, Zelle number is on there, my cash app is on there. Sow your seed. Sow your seed. The fear of giving is, coming from, is, 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 a, is a fear that's coming from Satan. Only Satan does not want you to get into that hundred fold. He wants you to continue to give what you can afford, not give what God is telling you to do. You got to get used to not looking at anything but God. The sword of the spirit says, I'm going to speak what God says. I'm going to give what God says. You got that? And I'm going to pray for you right now because many of you should be my partner. You should be my partners. My partnership is so important because you connect with me as an apostle. Even though uh, I don't put that na- on now my name a lot no more because I don't want to just be associated with trying to get them because my name, because uh, I'm an apostle with that title, you know, because the title doesn't do anything. I am an apostle by anointing, uh, you follow me, but I don't need that title because to Jesus said, you have, to, you have to believe me, believe me for the work's sake, my fruit will bear. So when you sow into this ministry, you're sowing into good ground. You're sowing into apostolic ministry. And, and Paul said to the Philippian church, because you partnered with me, Philippians 4, 19 says, my God, at, on an apostle level, will supply all your needs. So, so it's important for you now to sow that seed, give in Jesus' name, and believe God for your harvest. You're free. <laughs> to God. Now your, your seed is a weapon. Give, and it shall be given to you again. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall me and give it to your bosom. Now God is getting involved in that thing. Because you, 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 you re, you're releasing your faith in the word, and I'm sowing my seed, and I'm reaping my harvest in Jesus' name. So I'm, you ready? I'm going to pray right now, and I want you to sow your seed. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for those that have heard the word of God today. They've been in a fight, but God, now they've been lifted up out of that fight mindset to winning mindset. And Father, now I receive their seed, their gift, their, their, their gift whether they're giving tithes, whether they're giving offerings, which is a special seed that you're putting in their heart. I receive it in the name of Jesus, and I declare over their lives supernatural favor, increase, and blessing, Father, according to your word, in Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Praise God. Well, this coming Saturday, I'm going to be in Coolidge, Arizona, but I'll be on Facebook from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. I'm going to be teaching. I, I can't tell you what I'm going to be teaching. I'm, I'm studying it right now. So I don't have the right title, but I'm telling you something. God got me studying some things right now that's going to be, going to be revel- revelatory for you. So if you're on Facebook, just come to the same, to, to my Facebook on Alpha Craig Sr. And from 9 to 12, of course, I'll have breaks every, every 50 minutes. Some, some of you, some of y'all see on, be on my, my seminars and I'll be teaching the word of God 
on Saturday from 9, this is Arizona time, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. They're in Coolidge, but, uh, but it'll be on Facebook Live. So join me on this coming Sunday uh, on Facebook Live and, and give it this, this word that I'm going to share with you. It's going to be powerful. It's going to be powerful. I can't tell you what it is right now because I don't have the full jet. I'm studying it right now, but it's going to be powerful. So I want to see all of you that be with me. Uh, and some of, some of you can make it to Coolidge. It's be great. I, the, the address is right there on, 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 on Facebook, on, on the flyer there. Thank God you can be there because it would be great to be in that presence. But thank God, my son, Dr. Bell, we love you all very much. Amen. Like I said, right now, uh, you don't see Dr. Bell because Dr. Bell is in Arizona. I'm here in Las Vegas right now. But thank God for, uh, again, we're, we're moving forward together. We're moving forward. Amen. We, we're not slowing down. <laughs> Praise God. So until then, until we see you next Thursday on this particular setting, but many of you that will be with me on Saturday morning from 9 to 12 through Facebook, may God's riches and his very best be yours. Have a blessed night. Bye-bye now.